After working late into the night, Canada and the U.S. have reached a tentative agreement that will preserve a trilateral trade deal with Mexico and revamp NAFTA. Jerry Dias is the national president at Unifor. He joins us now with his reaction. Jerry, you represent uh, tens of thousands of auto workers in this country. How should they react to this news? They should be absolutely thrilled. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that the auto industry in Canada is alive and well and will be thriving uh, for, the, for generations to come. So I'm quite pleased this morning what we were able to accomplish at the bargaining table. It looks like specifically what's been accomplished is on the subject of the threat of tariffs being imposed on Canadian auto, uh, uh, Canadian autos and, and products being shipped into the U.S. is a raising of the ceiling to some 2.6 million vehicles. A lot of people are saying that that really is the same thing as an exemption from tariffs because that, that, that threshold is so high. Would you agree with that interpretation? Absolutely. I mean, we've been bargaining with, the, with our government. Uh, we've laid out our platform. We, build, we ship 1.8 million vehicles today to the United States. The most we've ever shipped in our history during the heydays of the late 90s uh, was uh, 2.2 million. So for us to have a floor of 2.6 million is huge. That's, that's 800,000 vehicles more than we ship today. That's four auto assembly plants. And that's just in case the U.S. decides to slap a tariff on us, which of course they're not now. By the time we ever get to that level, and I hope we do, uh, Trump would be a, just a minor footnote in history. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do you fully think they could appreciate and understood and analyzed all of the back and forth with product going back and forth across the border until ultimately it gets to the point we're making a car? Do you think that was kind of not really un fully understood initially with that back and forth with products crossing to even get to a part that therefore could be put into a car? And what is your opinion on that? Well, it, you're right. Parts frequently cross the border four or five times before they get it, uh, put onto a car. So the, 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 the nature of the industry is, is such that you can't just switch a switch and, and somehow things are going to change. But I'm not convinced that Trump was ever going to slap the tariff on us in the first place. Um, I think for him there was a straight political maneuver. I think he was using it as leverage to try to extract from the Canadian team as much as he could, and, and it didn't work. The Canadian team understood what was at stake here. They weren't going to get bullied, weren't going to get pushed into a bad position. I mean, I, I laugh when I think about the Conservatives that were saying, hurry up and carve the deal months and months ago. Uh, patience has paid off in so many sectors, and I give Christia Freeland, I give the Canadian negotiating team incredible, incredible respect for hanging tough and not folding when so many were pushing them to do so. How concerned were your members? You, you meet regularly uh, on the shop floor with uh, workers in uh, yep. Oshawa, Oakville, Windsor, all across, uh, all across the sector. How worried were they about, uh, about losing their jobs if, if Donald Trump made good on his pledge to impose punishing tariffs on Canadian product? Well, look, a 25% tariff destroys our industry. You can't survive uh, with that type of an economic challenge. So people were concerned, and legitimately so, because we're dealing with the U.S. administration that, frankly, is unpredictable, and that's saying it nicely. But today, people can rest. Uh, people can be, you know, can take a big, deep breath because the issue and the threats of tariffs are off the table. Uh, we really are in a situation now to attract investment. The Canadian dollar today is at 77 cents, the uh, U.S., the exchange rate. It's much cheaper to build a car today in Canada than it is in the United States. Uh, the storm clouds have listed, and I'm feeling pretty good. And I can be pretty cynical at the best of times. <laughs> What about the changes that were made uh, uh, with uh, uh, the U.S. and Mexico, particularly uh, the requirement that a greater proportion of vehicles be made uh, uh, by workers who are being paid at least 16 U.S. dollars per hour? See, that's the economic home run here. The problem with NAFTA was the Mexican wages. It was about, you know, minimum wage being $6 Canadian a day. The mass exodus of good paying manufacturing jobs from Canada and the United States to Mexico. But now with a $16 uh, threshold of 40, 45 um, percent of, of a vehicle or, or, or light truck, it changes the landscape completely. 
Also, we put into place in Mexico the whole fixing of the labor standards, free collective bargaining, the whole issue of protection agreements that were signed to benefit corporations, uh, the rights for Mexican workers to join a legitimate union. Those are all a part of this deal, so it's about fixing the economic landscape in Mexico uh, that will frankly stop the mass exodus of our jobs there. So I am pleased overall that we were able to connect the dots, we were able to deal with the contentious issues as it relates to labor. And ultimately this, I will argue, is the first labor deal, or excuse me, the first trade deal in the history um, of trade deals uh, internationally that really deals with labor. It's always been about the free flow of capital. It's always been about the business community. Trade deals have never, ever dealt with working class people, and this is the first one, I will argue, that actually has. So I'm pleased uh, that we were able to play a role in putting this thing together.